Welcome to Inside Imaginary Realism, an art show about visionary art and beyond. I'm Bonnie Hutt and we bring you this new mini-series. Each week we will be asking new and different questions of our artists living in Australia. We will be introducing art genres occasionally overlooked by the mainstream art world now regaining recognition. Where does creativity come from within the artist? Creativity is a fire that burns inside of all of us and something that we all have access to. Um, creativity comes about when there's a problem that needs answering, when there's a goal. Once there's a goal, then we use our creative process to get us there. I, I guess creativity comes from just wanting to communicate, so it's a form of communication. It's, it's their way of, from my interpretation, is their way of living and being and like speaking, like moving, it's just another form of communication for that individual, it's the way that they communicate. I think it comes from, it comes from the place that, I guess, the non-physical place, the, the soul, the heart, the, the engine um, and also I guess ancestry because to survive as a species creativity is such an important skill to, you know, re to create new ways to make food or to make shelter to keep you surviving so it's inbuilt in humans and probably everybody, every species an element of creativity for survival. So, um, in an artist, that just uh, is tapped into. From your soul. Uh, creativity comes from the center. When you drop back, strip back everything else, and you come into your center through the heart space, I feel that's when the most honest rendering of, of art can be brought out from the artist's soul. Um, creativity comes from a space of no mind where you can find a connection to your source, a connection to yourself, a connection to prana or a connection to um, the great creator. Uh, it comes from your soul, it comes from your heart. It come, that's where it comes from with me at any rate. Um, uh, I paint because I want to paint and I really do believe it has to come from here. Uh, then you take that a step further and because it's come from here you start seeing what's out there and you start putting that down on your canvas. I just don't like thinking of it it's just being inside you I think it's something you tap into that exists all around it's not something that's just inside you like you're the genius or you're the lodestone or whatever I mean that kind of crap. Is art an accurate reflection of history? Oh, wow. Um, yes and no. It, it, it's, uh, I think the church has used art uh, as a powerful tool to make people frightened enough so that they will go to church. So is that an accurate reflection? I don't think it is. Um, there's been paintings of wars and so forth that we thought were perhaps um, accurate reflections, but then we find other information that it leads us to believe that it was maybe dictated to more by um, powers to be. So there's definitely other art that people have created that is a good reflection of history, um, but it's not necessarily always the way. I feel like um, some artists have been swayed, of course, um, all through history uh, to create what has basically become history because people have seen only that image, especially before photography. and. 
believe that as to be history, but they've been manipulated back to the manipulation, you know, it's like um, putting these royal families up and looking exquisite, whereas someone like Goya would paint the royal family as ugly as they were and, and the realists were, I'd say they're the real depictions of history, but majority were um, tweaked or swayed and changed. Even the landscape painters would change the landscape, but people would say, yep, yeah, that's, that's, that's what it was, but uh, no. So yes, it's become history, the um, images. Um, I would say no. Um, I would say if the artwork and the artifacts from various times in history were left to um, speak for themselves, then I would say yes. But unfortunately, people come um, with a narrative of their own to explain various artworks that suits the uh, agenda at the time. And um, the narrative um, to explain the various art pieces from, um, throughout history um, are not necessarily an accurate presentation of what actually occurred. I don't think anything's an accurate reflection of history, so art can be a, a reflection, it can be multiple reflections, like even fractured yeah, reflections or mirrors. So, yes, it can represent uh, very accurately the feeling rather than the external, outside event. I think that in many ways you can read more truth in history from paintings than you can from text. Um, because if the paintings are done at the time of the historical events, the spirit and the feeling of that history is captured through the subconscious of the artist more so than text. I would say no. I would say it's very much um, an idolised version of history, but it's, a, it's maybe an accurate view of part of the imagination, I would say, maybe. And, but for a long time, when the camera didn't exist and we couldn't take photos, um, art filled that void, so we were recording reality for several centuries and as a, um, using art as a way to do that. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it is, um, as close as they can get it. Um, botanists and all that sort of people, we can't forget them. Uh, but I think sometimes poetic license and artistic license come into it. And uh, politics, I think if they don't want that to be seen, they'll put a spin on it and um, it can reflect something totally different to what really is happening. Art is a very accurate reflection of history because it narrates um, really uh, the, the, the stories, the myths, the legends, the, it narrates culture as it happens. Well, it's an interesting question because uh, history tends to be written by the person who won the war and the person who has the money. So I would say that some uh, art pieces could be accurate depictions, but it all depends. It would all depend. I believe it is a about 80% accurate. Like it's it's a a gloss over of history, but from a from a distance looking at, you know, certain periods in time and places and the art that came out of that time, it will give you the energetic frequency of that period, but the details will probably be, you know, a little bit like, you know, uh, lots of makeup on the details, you know. Um, but it still is what was going through people's minds, what was inspiring people and you know, who was doing what and why and, and stuff. So yes, to, a, to an extent, uh, a fairly large extent, art is a fairly accurate view of history. Is art in the eye of the beholder? Yes. Um, it's very hard to say what is good and bad in art because everybody has their own interpretation. Everybody has their own um, motivating factor of why they like it. And 
For that reason, it's very difficult to say what's good and what's bad. Absolutely. Um, but I think art in the eye of the creator is something more than the beholder. Art is definitely in the eye of the beholder. It can be uh, beholden to that person's experience, um, what it speaks to in that person's soul and what it instigates um, throughout their, their process, their witnessing, their, um, they're witnessing that tangible narrative. So, so whatever it, it brings for you. Uh, most definitely, yeah. Um... I can look at art and, and just stand there and look at it for an hour, one, one painting, you know, and then someone else comes along and just, oh, that's crap, and walks past it. <laughs> so, definitely in the eye of the beholder, yeah. Yeah, I believe that art is in the eye of the beholder. It's, uh, um, even though certain people do try to sway other people into believing different, um, overall, you like what you like, and you're allowed to question, you're allowed to not like art and have your opinion on it. Very much so. Um, some people, two people be, can be looking at a painting and one doesn't like it and the other person loves it. Um, it it's all a matter of taste really and um, what fits into their feelings and what they want to see on their walls or what they want to see visually. Um, I do believe, yes, it's in the eye of the beholder, for sure. I think that art is art and uh, its worth is in the mouth of the beholder. Yes, I believe that art is in the eye of the beholder because basically something only becomes art as a label when somebody labels it such. And anybody who labels something as art, um, that becomes art, so that is the beholder. And if only one person says this is art, then it is art for them. And I think it is art, full stop, because once one person says it's art, it, it has that attached to it from then on. Well, who's, what else would it be? I mean, if you can't see it, then what, it doesn't exist, does it? Art is definitely in the eye of the beholder, unless um, you are the type of person who likes to be told what you think. And many people um, like experts um, to tell them what to think. What is your concept of what is beauty and aesthetics? I find a lot of beauty in anything that has had meticulous painstaking work applied to it. Um, everything from the great cathedrals of Europe and their endless paintings and carvings of saints and angels to the hieroglyphic texts on pyramids um, I find yeah anything that where someone has taken a great amount of time and effort to create something I find that beautiful um, Aesthetics is me getting up in the morning and putting my makeup on and um, beauty is, is skin deep, it's, it's, it's not skin deep, sorry, it goes deeper than skin deep. It, it, it's looking beyond the aesthetics and that's what I think beauty is. When it comes to beauty and aesthetics, it's an interesting thing because I might like the red couch, but you like the blue couch, even though both of those couches are very well made and quite beautiful and it comes down to personal choice. But there's some things that we could collectively agree on. Uh, when looking at nature, and nature in balance with itself, we can all agree that the waterfall is beautiful, or the uh, sunset is gorgeous. Once again, I find that a difficult question to answer. I mean, sometimes ugly, so-called ugly things are beautiful. Sometimes people that have had a lot of experience, and you can see it on their face, much more beautiful than... These are conventional thoughts. They're much more beautiful than you know, the fresh-faced, nubile youth, so... But look, I think there's all forms of types of beauty and it's a perspective thing and it changes like most things. I personally love the intrinsic detail of life and 
and just the way that we communicate that. Um, artists tend to try to emulate nature or emulate things around them and when I look at nature and its details I know I could never emulate that, I just can't. But I do feel a lot of um, inspiration from things that you can see the amount of work put into it so I, I, that's why my work is so detailed so yeah. From my personal view on what is beautiful and what I find aesthetically pleasing is what moves me and many many things move me you may not even uh, I won't expect it and might be just the way a nut is on the plates left behind when everyone else ate all the other nuts and I would find that aesthetically pleasing and beautiful because it touches something in me and I feel very blessed that a lot of the world I can just find, see the beauty in it that I'm touched and moved by a lot of the world which is why I'm an artist I suppose you know and aesthetics is really really comes from you know whoever's holding that that beauty it really is an individual thing it's something that you can never um, tell you know someone else what their idea of beauty should be but you know when you recognize beauty it's something instinctual it's something innate that you you immediately understand it's an understanding Do you think that artists think differently from other people? Yes, I do. I think that artists look deeper for that deeper connection, for those underlying aspects of, of, the, um, of the whys and hows, of really understanding. Uh, I think that artists uh, find that creative process, whereas perhaps people who don't open up that side to themselves are you know, almost um, closing the door on that, on that creative process. So when you wake up to the fact that you are a creational being and you have an involvement with that, that co-creational aspect of yourself is woken up, then you can really journey with that and you can find, you know, um, you can really open to the mysteries of, of life. I have met such a variety of different artists who think completely different from each other um, that it's hard to put artists in one box and people who are not artists in another box because there's too much variation. I believe everybody engages with a form of creativity but artists and other craftspeople certainly um, engage in such a greater extent and as a result I do believe they think differently, they observe more closely, they perceive differently and it's like the abilities that everybody else's brains naturally have is honed finely and expanded greatly so it's like you know a sharp ceramic Japanese knife rather than you know a butter knife it's basically a knife but yes it is different what you can do with it and use it for yeah. Yeah, they definitely, uh, artists just, uh, how, do, how do you explain it? Um, there's a common phrase, artists see differently um, and you've got to learn to see like an artist. I think we look at things quite differently because we're, we, we look at the construction. Um, we don't look at the overall picture sometimes. And um, then again, we can look at the overall picture and, and form a completely different view of it. And you find most of us have got uh, some little quirkiness about us that um, maybe takes us away from the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, th I think because um, we spend our lives looking a bit deeper into things, sitting still and looking harder, we can actually expose things to other people that aren't usually in the arts by what we paint. Um, thus, the idea of visionary. I'd like to say no, but I, I feel yes, that's the case. Um, I think people who 
want to look at something differently and interpret that, think differently. And um, those people tend to feel slightly dissatisfied with everything around them because they want it to be better. And I, I think that's a very unique and individual way of approaching things. And it also it helps to solve issues. And uh, if you're satisfied with everything all the time and you don't question it, um, you're going to have a very different outlook on life. Absolutely. Their, their imaginations and their thoughts are more flexible, more well-rounded, more penetrating um, into the human mind and imagination than people who aren't creative. People that aren't creative have their blinkers on. They don't see beyond a certain level. They won't see. Yes, I do. I think um, you've got your corporate people that um, tend to like that's their day, that's in and out of um, wheeling and dealing and doing all of this stuff and never have that release. Whereas artists can have pretty much the same thing, and, um, but they've got a release. Uh, and it, that's the difference between them. I think artists are lucky that we can do that. I think that definitely someone whose life mission is to sell 20 used cars a week to people who don't actually need it, versus uh, the person who is going to take a 10-day silent retreat in order to uh, find out how to move forward on their next art project would definitely engage life in a different way and have different thoughts. But that said, um, collectively, we are all very, very similar as well. We trust that you enjoyed this week's program. Inside Imaginary Realism was brought to you by Metro Television. Please see the Visionary Art Network Australia's website to see more art and artists. Visionaryart.net.au The Department of Communication intend to take community television off air Australia wide. Please go to Channel 31's website at c31.org.au and join the campaign to keep us on air. It's just that you're so good looking, John. <laughs> yeah, but don't let that put you on. <laughs> really? What did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> That's serious, I meant every word. Can always, can always... You can cut that bit. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I'm going to start that again, sorry. Cut. Rewind. <clears throat> Yeah.